Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're talking about a brand new fragrance from Chanel, Paris, Paris. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. As you may know, I have my online beauty consulting service. This is where you get the chance to meet me and basically ask me any makeup or beauty related questions you have. So to make an appointment, click the link in the description box down below. Okay, Paris, Paris. Now, this is a brand new launch from Chanel. This just came out a few days ago, maybe a week ago. This is part of Les Eaux de Chanel. This is a subcategory of perfumes for the brand. And these are inspired by destinations, cities, uh, places where Gabrielle Chanel herself either frequented often, was inspired by, or the brand itself, the myth of Chanel, uh, enjoys and has a lot of creativity and inspiration behind that destination because Gabrielle Chanel has not been with us for a very long time now and German designer Karl Lagerfeld did a really great job infusing the myth of Coco Chanel into the brand itself. So as far as Les Eaux is concerned, we've had destinations like Paris Deauville, Paris Venise, areas that Coco herself used to frequent and loved to rest and recharge. And we also just have destinations that the brand really enjoys. So in continuing with embodying a city or a destination, this year we have Paris Paris. And I'm surprised it's taken this long to have Paris Paris. We have Paris Edimbourg, Paris Riviera, all of these wonderful destinations, but now we're staying local. We're staying in Paris itself. So this perfume is available online, in person. What's interesting is that the flacon, the bottle itself, uh, there's only one format available. It's 125 ml. Typically with Les Eaux, we've seen a 50 and 100 ml. I have a 50 here of Paris Venise. The 50 fits beautifully in your hand, so 100 would be twice the size and 125 would be just a little bit bigger. I'm not certain why this year Paris Paris only has one size. I was not in on the board of directors meeting. But they also have a scented body milk with Paris Paris, and they've also added it to Paris Edimbourg. So currently, the entire Les Eaux collection has a eau de toilette and also a scented lotion because Les Eaux is only eau de toilette. It's not eau de parfum, it's not heavy. So eau de toilette is going to be lighter, fresher, but it may not always be as long wearing as a more intense fragrance. That is Les Eaux. We have the nose for the perfume for the brand, Olivier Polge. So the nose is the director, basically the creative director for scents. He is responsible for creating the perfumes for the brand. He has come out with Gabrielle, he's come out with Mademoiselle Intense, Chanel L'eau, uh, Chanel Chance au Vive. So a lot of the staples in the past several years, that's what he's been in charge of doing, as well as the men's collections as well. And it should be noted that technically all perfumes are unisex. Sometimes there is marketing saying one fragrance is more feminine or more masculine, but they're unisex. If you like a fragrance, wear it. So let's look at the flacon, the bottle here. It looks gorgeous. I love the clear bottle and you can see the juice uh, beautifully inside here, sparkling in the sunlight. I think it's very crisp, very minimal, very clean, very elegant. And I like that it has a slight tint of pink to it. I love that. It gives me hope that it's going to be a very lovely light fragrance because like I mentioned, all fragrances are unisex. However, for me, with Olivier Polge, I've noticed that a lot of his fragrances on me lean very masculine. Uh, he had uh, Le Lion that came out, I think last year or the year before. That perfume on me is unwearable. It turns into Platinum Egoist. It's leather. It's so masculine on me. Even Chanel Chance Au Vive. I think it's the woody 
vetiver notes that again turn masculine on me and i want something light feminine and dainty so this light pink definitely is promising for me so according to the chanel site directly it says a sparkling floral woody fragrance inspired by the legendary city where gabrielle chanel found inspiration throughout her life so like i mentioned uh, les eaux it's all about inspiration and destination cities so when you are spraying and smelling paris paris you are supposed to be transported and transformed into a very chic elegant parisian lady and elegant and chic in a very understated way not in a flashy way but very understated and elegant way and you are basically sipping your coffee very leisurely at a parisian cafe and you have not a care in the world you literally have nothing planned for the day, no responsibilities, no appointments. It's all about spontaneous fun and enjoyment. That is the vibe of Paris Paris. I'm very excited. It says that the composition is an effervescent scent that opens with fresh lemon and tangerine notes, then reveals the playful character of rose. It's a Damascus rose and dashes of spicy pink pepper and woody patchouli with an unexpected twist. So I have been gifted a sample here and I have been testing this out um, on the sly, but I wanted to give a review here with you. I was testing it out off camera just to be able to attest to its longevity. So let's go ahead and give it a spritz. Now, this is an eau de toilette, so you can feel free to spritz more liberally. You can go a little bit heavy handed because it's a bit lighter. It's not that's this intense eau de parfum. Okay, so I experienced this differently than you may because perfume is magical like that. But for me, I have to let this dry down because when I sprayed initially, right away, when it's still wet and still sort of floating around in the air, I smell lemon. It's very citrusy, but that doesn't last very long. As it melts into my skin and dries down, I notice the rose. Yes, the Damascus rose, the Damask rose. It is so lovely. I think Olivier Polge has found a way to modernize the rose scent. Often when we think of roses, we think of your grandmother's notes and your grandmother's perfume, but this rose is a modern take on the rose note. It's very elegant, it's soft. You can tell that it's rose, but in the best possible way. It's not heavy, it's not like a bouquet of roses hitting you in the face. It's very, very subtle that's the main note that i notice is the rose but in a very soft beautiful way and i notice also a little hint of that pink pepper but what i've noticed is that they have found a way to make this so soft the spicy notes are very very soft it's not going to hit you in the face with patchouli and pink pepper where it's like a spicy musky woody fragrance the pink pepper is there that adds a little bit of sharpness but in a very very subtle soft way and honestly the patchouli i think is almost undetectable like undetectable whatsoever if you're sensitive to patchouli which i know a lot of you are this patchouli here it's, I mean, it's sort of there as like a background. It's there as like a, you know, when you add vanilla to baking, it adds a little something something, but it doesn't really stand out. This is the patchouli here. I think that Coco Mademoiselle, the patchouli in here is way more noticeable. Like if you notice patchouli in Coco Mademoiselle, I think in this one here in Paris Paris, you won't notice it whatsoever because I don't. It's really a very vague soft background note it's the soft damascus rose that you're going to notice and there is a little bit of a citrusy accord like at first that's sort of what i noticed like the cr crisp wetness at first is more citrusy but then it really softens and it's not i wouldn't say that this is like a citrusy scent i notice the tangerine more than the lemon just like 
a nice, tiny, very sweet, juicy tangerine, but in a very soft way. It's it's less citrusy, less orangey than Mademoiselle. Mademoiselle has more of that Sicilian orange and mandarin, whereas this, it's really the rose that you're going to notice. When this came out, when I saw the promo photos, I thought, oh, this is going to be like Chanel Chance au Tendre because that one came out several years ago and that is the grapefruit effervescent bubbly champagne hyper feminine perfume which is beautiful but this here is absolutely not like au Tendre it's not even close it's just it has a similar color to it but that's really the only similarity it's really not the same uh, au Tendre is more of that grapefruit sparkly bubbly perfume i wore this yesterday when i got my hair done and the person doing my hair asked me what perfume i was wearing because i was doing a wear test and i told him it's the new chanel and so it has a, a cast but it's not going to knock someone out the second you walk into the room they have to be a little bit closer to your orbit like someone doing your hair which is nice you know every perfume there's a, a perfume for every mood so this one here it's not yeah it's not going to knock someone out but if they're close by they're going to pick up what you're wearing and i did i think maybe three or four spritzes on myself on my arm and i think it lasted maybe four or five hours it's an eau de toilette, it's not an eau de parfum. So it's not going to last you 12 hours, but it also, I found it lasted on clothing. So I, I found it had a longer shelf life on my clothing than on myself. So you could go ahead and spray this on your clothing. What I like is that since it is an eau de toilette, you can spritz yourself quite liberally. I like that in the summer when you want to feel fresh, you just want to go ahead and douse yourself really nicely with the perfume. And because it is lighter, you can feel free to do that without overkill. If we look at other perfumes from Les Eaux, we have Paris Riviera, which I think a lot of people might think is going to be similar to this, but Paris Riviera is citrusy and way more white floral. The jasmine white floral accord in Riviera is much more prominent, so it's not going to be the same because in Paris Paris it's really just rose that you notice but again like a soft almost like soft candied rose it's very soft it's the most modern take on a rose I've ever noticed I'm sorry I lost my voice there for a second and Paris Deauville is completely different Paris Deauville on me unfortunately turns into bug spray it's too green it's too woody um, so it's absolutely not like Paris Deauville and Paris Venise is more vanilla. It has like that soft powdery DNA. This one doesn't really have powder, but it has a softness to it. Uh, Paris Venise is more vanilla. To me, Paris Venise smells like wealth. It smells like understated money, like old money, cashmere someone who doesn't wear name brands or labels, who just has that much money that they don't care. That's what Paris Venise smells like to me. And Paris, Paris, I think they really knocked it out of the park with the description because I do smell very understated elegance. Again, not someone who's like wearing lots of brands and flashy things to try to make themselves look elegant, just very understated, probably neutral colors, who doesn't have any responsibilities for the day, is just leisurely enjoying her coffee in Paris, on a terrasse. It's probably, I think it's early morning, but it's summer, and it's about to get really hot later in the day, and she is just going to be spontaneous she's going to do whatever she wants when she wants how she wants it that's the vibe that's the attitude of Paris Paris I think that this fragrance has the potential to be I don't say like earth shattering but I think it's going to be extremely popular because it is such a beautiful fragrance and for me personally I feel more represented with Paris Paris than Le Lyon or Paris Edimbourg or other fragrances like this to me is what I've been missing from Chanel fragrances for quite some time. I like this. It's feminine, but it's not like 
girly like in a cheap way you know sometimes perfumes smell too sweet and too girly it smells a bit cheap this is feminine but in an elevated modern twist it's really beautiful it makes me think a little bit of when uh, Chanel Chance Au Tendre came onto the market and everyone lost their mind. This is what I think of this perfume. Like I think it has this type of potential, but it's a bit more refined. It's a bit more subtle. And I'm trying to think of other like perfume comparisons. Maybe uh, YSL Parisienne. But I think Parisienne is maybe a little bit sweeter, but I don't know. I think if you like Parisienne, you would enjoy this. If you like Mademoiselle Eau de Toilette, you would like it, although Eau de Toilette is sweeter because it has lychee. This one, um, it, you would like it because Eau de Toilette Mademoiselle has less patchouli, but it has a little bit of the same background. So I think you would enjoy Paris Paris as well. Even, you know, Paris Riviera, I think you would like it in a way. I, I know I compared it earlier and said that the white flower accord in Riviera is heavier and very different. I think if you still like flowers, it's just, there's no jasmine in this, there's no white notes, it's just rose. But if you appreciated Riviera, I think you would also really appreciate Paris Paris. And maybe also if you like uh, Chanel 19, you know that very powdery perfume, it smells like baby powder, very clean, very fresh. Paris Paris doesn't have the same powdery, clean, fresh notes, but maybe just like in the back after you smell the rose like you know sometimes a rose petal has that velvet and it feels a bit powdery i think it has a little bit of powder in it so i think if you like 19 you could also appreciate this one but i think that this is an extraordinary perfume i love it maybe it's not like the most complicated groundbreaking perfume but like i think it's great like I don't know, I feel like sometimes we want to overcomplicate perfumes and add notes that are just way too complex and like, I like the Accord, I like the soft, very soft, spicy pink pepper, the modern rose, a little bit of tangerine, it's gorgeous, it's a beautiful summer scent, I think this is going to be my scent of the summer, I will be purchasing this full size very soon, I think it's gorgeous, I think it's wonderful. I love it. I think it's a beautiful perfume. I really, really hope you get your hands on it because it is in store or will be very, very soon depending on where you live. So please go ahead, try it out, experience it, and also maybe try to see how it evolves on you, like when it's still wet, when it dries down. Let me know what notes you pick up, and I know many of you have already picked it up, so let me know what it smells like on you because we all have a unique experience with perfume so let me know what notes stand out to you what does it smell like on you maybe in the comments leave a little pink emoji with a little glitter sparkle because that's what i think of when i think of this perfume i think it's the color the pink juice makes me think of that pink emoji so leave that pink emoji in the comments if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for joining us again and if you're new to my channel I hope you take the time to subscribe. We talk about nothing but luxury beauty, a lot of Chanel. I used to work for the brand, so I have a lot of insider information and I still have some connections. So I know a lot about the brand and a lot about luxury beauty. So make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think because we all have a different experience with perfumes. So I would love to hear how it wears on you. And on that note, I think this is all I have for you guys for today. So thank you all so much for stopping by. Hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.